Christ or the world in need of his peace. We heard Deacon Joe just read a passage from the Gospel about Jesus' encounter when they, they bring him a man who can't hear and can't speak. His friends inconvenience themselves enough to bring him to the Lord, and the Lord takes the time to pull him aside, touch his ear, touch his tongue, so that they might be returned to their functions, so that they can hear, and so that he can speak. To a certain extent, um, those are all beautiful images that all really capture for us the work the Lord wants to accomplish in us through our stewardship and through commitment to campaign. The culture in which we live is really does invite us to pursue our own self-interest and to live rather selfishly, kind of taking care of the three most important people in the world, me, myself, and I. <laughs> and it's very easy to get caught up in that race of having the next nicest widget or the next convenience, forgetting about um, ultimately the reality, ultimate reality that everything we do and I have is a gift from God. Of our lives, the gift of our talents, our abilities, the gift of the wealth we either receive or accumulate and save. Everything we have has been given to us. And as such, that gift is going to be used wisely as disciples of Jesus, the stewards. We need to consult God and say, God, how do you have us use these blessings so that your kingdom might be built and so that others can benefit from our sharing of them. You see, when we live selfishly, closed off to the needs of other people, we don't function as God would have us function. We're most fully alive, we're most fully thriving and vibrant and engaged when we're giving ourselves away in love to others. For those who have experienced marriage, you know how well marriage works when you're doing that, and how poorly it works when you don't. You know, you can see it within your own family life, you see it within your workplace, the neighborhood, when people are generous, there's something beautiful that takes place. Human beings come to life. So this stewardship commitment uh, period invites us to take a look at all the blessings the Lord has given to us, and say, God, what do you want me to do with them? How do you want me to use them? And so when you get the commitment card in the mail, you might think, how is my prayer life? How might I spend more time with the Lord in prayer on Sundays during the week? What kind of spiritual opportunities for growth have I taken or not? What might I do? What raw talents has God given to me as a doctor, as a lawyer, as a teacher, as a stay-at-home mom, as a laborer? Whatever your capacities in life, everyone has something to give and share. I learned something about Deacon Dan a couple days ago. He hurt his back. I said, doing what? Welding. He said, I didn't know you welded. He said, well, I'm not really good at it. I said, I really don't care. I think you could weld. I said, the chairs that get broken in the basement, as long as you put them back together, I don't care what they look like. So, I said, well, I borrow the welding equipment. I said, I'll borrow some for you. If you weld. So, but again, whatever the ability of the church, God can make use of it, not just for your own pursuits, but for the good of the larger community. The, uh, the work that's been achieved here in my time as pastor really has come about only because of incredibly generous people bringing to bear their gifts and talents and capacities, not only on achieving projects, but also deciding how to get them done, how to prioritize them, and make just the most sense. And so uh, everything from the, we haven't done much landscaping, but what we've done is beautiful because the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, the buildings and grounds people have done their part to uh, contribute to the garden for the watering plants. Um, Tom Grace, landscaping, Tom Simon, volunteer at college that has donated to his business. Um, the windows, the roofs, the parking lot, the vestibule, everything that's been done, the ramps, the deck, the doorways, it's all been made possible because people have spent a lot of time advising and working toward the best solution and watching the contractor so they don't cheat us. <laughs> That's how the city does it. When the city hires a contractor, they pay somebody to babysit the contractor so they don't get cheated. Not speaking ill of any contractors, but <laughs> they've been very generous. There's Kenny and many others. But you know how it is. People with always watch it. No, never mind. So at any rate, um, so I appreciate all the good work that people have really put together to make 
everything constantly. And a lot of it has come through rooted in faith moneys. And a lot of it has come through your generous support of the offertory. Thank you for those who can throw something in the basket weekly, for those who use the FTs, because again, it costs a lot of money to run the place. And when something breaks, like the sound system over the last few weeks, that's why we've got this thing set up here. You know, it's just not a five hundred dollar, thousand dollar project to around twenty five thousand to put up a new sound system. I'm a cheap Slovak and I'm a pessimist, so I, I bang for such things. Don't you worry. <laughs> I shouldn't tell God that he could throw some real curveball at me, I'm sure. But um, again, just like in your own households, when things break, you gotta have the money to fix it. You can't wait. So hopefully over the next few weeks we'll get a the bids all taken care of and make a, a selection for uh, a system that will be far better than what we've been living with. And so I do want to thank all of you who've served the parish council, the finance council on our stewardship committee, on our IT committee, on the buildings and grounds committee, all those groups on the first staff who advised me and helped me make decisions. I want to thank all of you who work to educate our young people in PSR, preschool, children's liturgy of the word. I want to thank all of you who especially take communion to the homebound, the nursing home folks, or hospitals and people at the hospice. You know, probably about 200 some people receive communion every week because of generosity of our work with extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion. And they're really good at letting us know priests wise who needs to see one of us before they're unconscious and unable to talk or go to confession and be reconciled with God. So I really do appreciate their ministry that helps us attend to the sick and the dying much better than if it were just one person who would work. I also want to thank you for all of you who have been involved in music and who have led the canting and singing. Again, it takes a lot of people to make everything we do here at the parish possible. It's only your generosity that makes it happen. And so I invite you to prayerfully consider over the next uh, few weeks what the Lord has blessed you with and how he might ask you to share it in a way similar that you've already been doing, but maybe differently. Now, there's nobody who's so impoverished that can't share something, and there's nobody who's so blessed that they can't take away something from being uh, invited to life. After Mass today, we have our ministry prayer in the basement along with hospitality Sunday. We've also got the, the life share of blood mobile we'll out there for those who like to give the gift of life, share blood with those who need. Also, in the navigator coming out will be four town hall meetings, as well as in the parish bulletin, some surveys. I'd like to pick your brains and get your input on where we'd like to go in the next six years by way of not just buildings and grounds, but also by way of ministries and staff development. Where we want to see our parish, we'll get the back belt fixed. He doesn't want to show up the ones in the back and still make noise. Learn. Screech first, then start. Um, but at any rate, so please take a look at those surveys. Talk with your family members and friends about what you'd like to see happen here at St. Francis. And uh, if you're not able to come to one of the town hall meetings, send me an email or just write me a note so that I can, the parish council and the stewardship committee, the finance council, can listen to uh, this sort of goals and directions you want to set for us as a parish and where we want to be. Realize that everything we've accomplished in the last six years really did come about through the agenda set of those town hall meetings and the surveys we put together. So again, I'm willing to listen. We tried to focus on making the parish more welcoming, fixing the, the plant, trying to be good about educating our young people, being concerned for the poor, and again, just continue to do the simple things that a parish should do well. So why invite you now to 